What up, y'all? Robin, back in the nest before we get into 2021, last episode of the year. Um, I am in the nest with my homie. Tell the people who you are, boo. Hey, y'all. It's Denise, a.k.a. Red Bone Diva on all social media, Twitter, Instagram. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? My ginger bae. <laughs> she is a for real ginger. All right. So before we get into like like everything we're going to get into, first, 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 kind of bittersweet, somber, we get into first. So um, this past weekend, we lost somebody like super super heavy in our network personally but in uh, from our city you know um for all those that know rob uh the photographer the artist um that dude um unfortunately he is no longer with us um friday uh he left the living and transitioned um i'm not gonna get into specifics because i don't know the specifics um honestly speaking but he was close to all of us um in many ways different reasons different you know interactions but he was a good dude he was a good man he was amazing father um you know husband um he gave back to the community uh and um so yeah we just want to take a moment to show our respect and um, show love to him, his his wife, his kids. Uh, he was taken from us way too soon. Way um, too soon. Way too soon. And, and I'm feeling every type of way about that. Um, still trying to process what I'm saying to you guys right now. Um, so before we get into any like heavy, heavy talk, let's just pay a moment to him. So we're going to pay a moment but a silence for Rob and uh, respect for him and, and and how he and what he left with us in his time here. All right. Um, so I'm going to shift, um, I guess, the next thing, just simply because if I continue down that path, I will definitely be soggy in front of you today. Um, no, you know, not to not to denigrate or, or cut short the legacy that he left. But um, yeah, I've spent about a day and a half crying and feeling every type of way about that whole situation. So yeah. Um, so yeah, but to to everyone who loved him, to who got a chance to know him, do business with him, art, hang out, drink, whatever you know what it is. So uh, much love to his wife, his kids. We definitely send our love, we our support, our everything. Um, it's definitely tough times. Um, so yeah, all the love to his family. If y'all know them personally, definitely surround. You know, reach out, do what you can to keep them supported and uplifted. This is a really messed up time, you know, so, so yeah, um, not to, not to shift gears, um, and, 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 and lighten the mood, but definitely want to switch things up. Um, so I, I I'm going to speak on because my son's semester, his quarter has wrapped up, um, parenting through COVID. So this first semester, um, my son, he's a freshman in high school. He goes to Marquette. And this semester was rough, not gonna lie. Um, full disclosure, the kid didn't do as well as I thought he would have. Um, and it's just because this year has been rough for everybody and trying to navigate school and virtual learning for kids who can't even like fathom what that is and just to kind of throw them into that. Um, I was expecting a lot more than what I should have been. And so, yeah, um, so it was, it was a rough, rough uh, quarter. He just finished his exams on Friday. He has six exams over this past week. So he just finished that up. We find out his final grades. And um, I should know by Christmas, worst case by like New Year's, but um, parenting through COVID, right? So it's been a doozy. If you have a child that is like a social butterfly, super outgoing, COVID right now, like this whole everything is like the worst thing if you have an outgoing kid. 
um, if you have a child that like is more it is a house body video game driven and no no knock to kids who are like more dialed into their video games and going outside but um, for kids that are like super outgoing and um, social butterflies COVID and this hype you know this schedule if your school is if their school is hybrid or completely virtual it weighs more and it takes a toll on them and their focus more than, than you realize. And I can speak from from experience. I thought because my son is hyper intelligent and, you know, you know, he's well versed in conversation and all of those things that like, oh, this is like this is he'll be able to learn in any environment. And my son verbalized that like the environment that he prefers is the in classroom environment. Me personally, I'm the complete opposite give me a virtual classroom all day. I just need my deadlines and that's all I need. I need my, my resources to get my work done and my deadlines out of the outside of that. I don't need to see another teacher, not in the now school. I swear to God, I don't, my whole grad school program. I went my entire grad school degree online, right? Anybody who has done grad school, they know that's not for the faint of heart, let alone talking about taking all of your classes online and my major was project management, right? Um, and so to be able to do that and keep maintain a, a 3.5 GPA in grad school, all virtual, like for me, it truly is. Like I learned better in that environment for the reasons that make sense for me. I just assumed that because my son is hyper intelligent as I am, that it would make sense for him. But he is more outgoing, shocker, <laughs> than I am. I pretend good on TV. <laughs> he is more outgoing in real life. He is just an outgoing person in real life. So sitting in front of a computer doing a Zoom call of any sort doesn't work well with the way that he learns and the way that he connects to people. And it didn't. It, it took for me to learn that in real time to understand that, right? So that's a that's one that I'm trying to navigate and and trying to make sense we're on Christmas break right now so we don't have to really get into anything serious with him and like game plans until like another week from now so I'm letting him like enjoy Christmas break I'm not you know we're not having any real discussions about school but it's a discussion that has to be had because we got to have a game plan so to my parents out there trying to figure it out through COVID I feel you but at the same time, we got people who are not parents, like my co-host, but who are also going through and navigating through COVID in their own ways. So give me your insight, boo. How you been navigating through COVID? So, for again, pro transparency, I was um, sent home from my job to work from home as of the end of March. Okay. Initially, um about a week or so maybe two weeks before we were all sent home we were given the choice as to whether or not we wanted to work from home okay i like your son is i am more social so yeah. initially yeah. i said if i have the choice no i do not want to work from home i enjoy my environment with my co-workers with mm -hmm. my supervisor mm -hmm. With, you know, everybody, even though, you know, the customers aren't the best, but my coworkers kind of make my day. And you know, so, I so full disclosure, like you deal with, I'm not going to, unless you want to give this disclosure on where you work, but where you work, for my understanding is like high pressure, like very demanding. It, industry, it's definitely right? very demanding. Okay. Call center. Like <laughs> it's definitely yeah, yeah. like, yeah, yeah. They, don't, they, they could care less about. They don't care about about the workers well-being they don't care right. about the workers at all they just want they what they want, want they when want. they want and how they want it and it's a tough time right now because you know people are in need and people need resources and everybody's on edge and if you're on the opposite end of that where you're giving the resources that people need and they're giving you like disrespect or like rudeness you try to find that balance because it's like some of them it's really not them want like they're not trying to be rude it's just this is tough ass time right and i navigate as a worker i completely understand that and yeah. i try to deliver the best of the best when i can right but it's still at the same time i'm exactly at human. the same at the same yeah. time i'm only human and i can only take so much yeah that makes sense and so, like I said, initially we were given the choice whether or not we wanted to work from home. Yeah. By the end of March, beginning of April, everybody was sent home with no choice. Damn. 
So working I mean, from home, sense, and it does, it definitely makes sense. And I under, not that I necessarily like agree with it in the beginning, but, but now here we are nine months in to the pandemic. I definitely agree with it, understand it and fully support it. Um, so it's not the one thing, right. About how the layout, the flow of like your job and the pandemic and making it make sense. What's one thing? That you would like if you could change it and it would make things a lot less stressful for your job working from home and like navigating in this pandemic what would that one thing be? I would actually I would say that my job has definitely been doing a great job well maybe not my job as a whole but my team my mm-hmm. direct supervisor has been doing a great job as far as navigating through the pandemic my okay. supervisor specifically has created a flow chart that each one of the members of her team gives out a quote for she created a flow chart for the entire month every month since we've been home yeah so that um every member of her team has a week in which they send out a quote it's a good morning quote whether it's related to what happened the night before as far as sports politics whatever whatever the case may be it's just a good morning quote to the team okay it could be something funny inspirational serious politics sports whatever the case may be it's just more of hey i see you i recognize you hello how are you doing yeah and everyone responds good morning team how are you just it's just a really yeah. light-hearted thing my That's supervisor important. has done a great job at and doing that he she has done that from the beginning of the pandemic up yeah. until Set now and so every week she's created a flow chart for the entire month everybody has an assigned week your mm-hmm. week is you know you send out a good morning quote by you know whatever time it is mm-hmm. and it's just that it can be funny inspirational series whatever the case may be just send out your quote so I That's definitely I definitely enjoy that she has set the tone. She has made it great and engaging with all of us. Yeah. So that that's the one thing that I do like. I don't I don't think there there is much that we can change because with everything being virtual, there's really not much that you can do without yeah. getting you know, too much backlash. I I don't want the hybrid schedule going in, you know, for a month and being home for the month. I need, I'm the person that needs consistency. Either we're going to be in the office or we're going to be virtual. If we're going to be virtual, then let's make this virtual work. Yeah, it's, for me, it's a, it's definitely a difficult It's definitely a shift. Right.
conversation. Right. That level of respect and And it's not an it's not an easy boat to navigate. Shout out to all those people who have more than one, though. Like, parenting more than one in different grades. It's yeah. Exactly. Like, figure it out, right? Like this is the time that You're like tests your parents. That you've that, got this no tests choice. your patience. This tests your, your everything. Strength, your it ability, tests your everything. Everything. And I can tell you honestly, right? Anybody that knows me, I keep it a buck, good, bad, or indifferent. I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm thankful and blessed that my son is healthy and that he has his wits about him because I do not know the type of parent that I could be otherwise. I'm saying to you, completely honestly, not saying anything other, don't breathe anything other than to it, other than what I just said, because that unknown, I truly, I do not know how strong I could be if I had to navigate a ship of a child with a learning disability or a disability of any sort on top of navigating COVID. You have no real resources. If you're an MPS kid, you just got to hope for the best, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm blessed that my son goes to a school. I pay a pretty penny. Don't get it twisted. I pay a pretty penny for this comfort that I have. It's not for the faint of heart, but I, I, I have no issues paying that for the comfort that I have. A lot of my friends who have kids who are in, in NPS schools, they stress. It's a lot of stress depending on what school you go to. I don't have that stress. I really don't. And I'm not saying that to, like, gloat. I'm just saying that I'm in this position that I don't have that stress. And I wish for that for every parent because the little stress that I do endure that is based upon my son just turning stuff around. I'm thankful that that is the extent of my level of stress. If it was beyond, if it was a, my son is having struggles and the school is trying to figure out how to be the best resource under limited resources, I don't really know. Like to give you guys context, my son, I got an update about my son's grades and, and his status in school at Marquette. They didn't just report that to me and say, well, you need to figure it out. They reported it to me and then came with an action plan. We are going to put him on academic probation. We're going to give him a tutor. We're going to require that he attends after school study, after school study. So after he puts in his eight hours in the school day. He is still expected and required to stay after school with his assigned tutor that gives him a game plan on how to turn his grades around and how to maintain a solid work plan for the semester going forward. Shout out to Marquette High School. I tell you, I am thankful for every expensive penny that I pay because I would not get that in 
say what you want but with the exception of a select few of NPS schools I'm not getting that sense of security absolutely not absolutely not they'll report they'll report your child's grades to you and that's about it day that they kid was not present in virtual school the day prior Marquette is called let, let, let me tell you Friday my son thought his exam schedule was one thing and so he functioned accordingly when I tell you the school called both of my phones both of my phones to find out why he was not logged in to his class his exam like they don't play no games they not let it hour go by without notifying me if Robert does not log into his virtual class on time, let alone show up. So I can't even relate to a parent who is telling me, I found out two days after that they didn't actually log into their classes. Parents still got to go to work and live their lives, me included. I have a very demanding job. I have a portfolio that requires my attention. It requires me to be there and present. But at the same time, there are some parents who have jobs that are so demanding, that are so time consuming, that their employer does not care. Not that they don't understand, but they can't afford to care that you need time off or you need to break away to ensure that your child is dialed in and focused at school. So while you're punched in at the same time that your kids are doing school, you're just hoping for the best. You're hoping that your kids are being productive and responsible. And then you have to deal with the aftermath well after you find out that they've not been responsible 48 to 72 hours later because they're taking advantage of the fact that you as a parent got to do what you got to do that's a tough ship to navigate right and i don't got i don't have i don't got an answer for y'all now that i don't got for you you got to make sense of that the best way you know how me personally this is my point of view the views and opinions reflected and spoken about on Robert's Nest do not reflect anybody else. This is me. This is me. I will not, I will not let any job, anything stress me. Period. Word to city so girls. Much. So if a job is coming to me with things that don't line up with my life and my child and the standards and the, the parameters that I set up, it is what it is. Take that how you want to. Take it how you want to. But I am going to protect my peace. I'm going to continue to cultivate my, 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 the everything that I need to be secure and safe and, and be right mentally and emotionally for my kid. And if that means that I got to draw lines in the sand with my job, with my business, with my everything, balance is important to me, period. So if it don't make sense, I'm not doing it. If it's causing me too much stress in my life, it's going to take away from my son. And I'm not doing it. I'm not entertaining it, him, that, nothing. That's just it. That's where I'm at. And again, that's me. That's how I function, right? I know a lot of people are not in that position. They can't afford to walk away from a job. I've, listen, I've walked away from amazing jobs, amazing pay, amazing benefits for my peace, for my son's peace. From, to me to secure and, and, and cultivate and maintain the ability to be a proper mother to my child. I don't want to be that parent that can provide my ch child with everything material. Except but the emotional support emotionally that because they, I'm not they there. need. I'm not that just, I, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it. It's not for me. The emotional support is just I, as important yeah, as the materialistic. As I got one kid. I got an only child. So this got to make sense. Like, I'm not trying to blindly cultivate a, a, a man that ends up hurting one of y'all daughters. Let that breathe for a second. Because a lot of parents out here be cultivating and, and, and championing their kids, knowing that there's some real messed up seeds planted within them. But that's their kid and they and, and, and they not gonna they gonna act like that that that's not a big deal. No. My son knows how to cook at 14 and not know he can make top ramen. No, my son can cook, cook. Why? Because I want him to be a fully sufficient man who does not need a woman to come into his space to try to save him, but can bring and add to any situation that he comes to, period. And that is something that a lot of parents can't say. They will blindly cultivate damaged children who go on to damage other people that create this vicious cycle of a bunch of damaged ass 
individuals. This is no shade or no knock to parents. We all do it in our own little way based on upbringing, love, and nature versus nurture. This, it just, it's one of those things that just is. But if you're a parent that realizes the toxic upbringing that, that you have, like I have, and you want to stop that cycle, that's how you do it. You tap into the things that didn't make sense for you growing up, and you try to right those wrongs as uncomfortable as it may be for your child. And that's what I'm actively trying to do, trying to make sure that when my son encounter one of y'all daughters, that y'all ain't blowing up my phone and my and, and trying to pull up on me because y'all feel like he is a less of a caliber human being and y'all trying to understand why he doing y'all like that. If my son grows up to be an unsavory individual, it ain't got nothing to do with his upbringing. It's a choice that he made. So you got to take it up with that man. <laughs> and that's a lot of people. They upbringings ain't got nothing to do with why they're not that they're not that great. But in some instances, you got some folks, if you look at their upbringing, you see absolutely why they some unsavory people. Raised on survival ba- compared to based um, so raised love, on love. love ver- nature versus, love versus nurture. Yes. Nature yes. Versus, versus nurture. If you have been loved organically, all your life and your upbringing has been love and support. The emotional support and versus so, the materialistic things, support. You're going to function and look at the world completely differently from someone who had to get it how they live. What you mean love? What you mean trust? Trust who? For what? For why? Hug? What? What you mean? I don't want you to touch me. I had to learn that. We cool and all, son. but... Let me tell you, I had to learn that through my son's eyes. I was completely oblivious to just how much kids don't get the things that they need through my son. When he was third and fourth grade, he was constantly in drama. Why? Because my son naturally just normally talking about the life that he lives. This is no, I'm not trying to, he's not rubbing it in anyone's face. Not necessarily braggadocious. Not even bragging. When the teacher asks, what did you do for summer break? Who... And you ask my son whose birthday is in the middle of the summer. He's probably going to have some pretty incredible things to say because he's got parents who want to make sure his birthday experience, if no other experience, is incredible. Right. So example, my son's eighth or ninth birthday, his father took him to Disney World for 10 days. You heard me. (laughs) Disney World for For 10 10 days. days. (laughs) Disney World. If any parent has took their children, children to Disney World, you know that ticket. So one child, one adult, Disney World, 10 days, right? The kid's dad spent a pretty penny. He told, he showed me the receipts. I know exactly what he paid for it. Several Christmases could have been spent on what he paid for (laughs) Disney World for one child for 10 days. But he did that, right? Not to shade anyone, not to try to, not to one up anything. This is the love that he shows for his child. School starts. Teacher asks, tell me the fun thing you did over the summer. What child is not finna raise their hand with pure beyond excitement? Enjoy. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yes. I went to Disney World with my dad. And that's what my son did. He shared very organically him being able to enjoy Disney World. So for you, for those who don't know, my son's birthday is June 28th. He was supposed to have been born July 4th. His father planned a trip that encompassed him being able to enjoy Disney World in the middle of the summer and over the 4th of July holiday. So that's fireworks, lights, the whole bells and whistles. If you experience Disney World on any capacity, you know fireworks is they lame. They do that anyway. So that coupled with the 4th of July, you couldn't have told my son it wasn't the best possible thing that ever happened to him in life. With that being said, he shared that, right? His joy and excitement for having a great birthday over the summer. That resulted in him getting into a fisticuff situation over recess because they felt like my son was trying to shade them and rub his existing, literally existing as a love child in their faces because they're not getting the standard things that a child should get. Now, again, Disney World is not the standard for a child, so I'm not saying that. But however you you choose to show your, your love and affection to your child, whether that's through expensive things, trips, whatever, that is your lane. You work hard for your money. However you want to show love for your child is on you. 
I'm not saying that to say that me, my son's father taking him to Disney World for 10 days is the standard. That is not. But that is what his father chose to do. And my son chose to speak on that from a very organic place. And they caused so much drama to the point that he was damn near about to fight in the, on the playground. Because things that come natural for us and way, the way we show love for our son is not natural for other parents. Like just a simple checking in on your kid when they get in the car. How was your day? Do you know how many kids don't get asked how is their day? Simple. It's grown folks who don't get asked how their day is. And all they want is for one person to ask how was, how your, was your damn day? day? So just think about a kid who is dealing with things that is beyond their control. If you're a child that born into a Four household that words. can't afford nicer things and you go to a school and they give you shit and you can't rib back because you don't got those things. And what can you do because you at the mercy of what your parents can afford? That's a lot to take home with you. And then you go home and no one asks how your day was. Exactly. You visibly you don't look like you the, had a bad day. You don't have the capacity to process that. Yeah. Your parents or your yeah. guardian is not giving you the space to that process part. the type of day that you've had. That part. Good, bad, or, or indifferent. indifferent. Whether That's it's a great exactly day. Yes, it. I had a great day. You know, we did this, that, and the other. Yep. You know, oh, my day was all right. It was cool. Nothing special happened today. Yep. Or today was a terrible day for me. Today, you know, I, I just simply expressed, you know, that I had a good day. And, you know, the the kids, they were not they were not responsive, you know. Right. It's a it ma- it makes a big difference. And 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 for me, like I don't the things that I do for my son, I share very privately, right? I'm not a public person when it comes to the things that I do for my son in any way. And it's a couple of reasons. One, because not every parent is able to do the things that, and not to say it like me and his dad do stuff that's like beyond, you know, oh my gosh, but in our pocket and where we at and, and what we can afford, we do some pretty dope things for our kid, right? We show him in every way possible that he is loved and that we are like, my son wants to work a job, right? So he's 14. He wants to work. He's been wanting to work since he's been like 10. Am I lying? Don, Don is in the building. He know. My son been wanting to work since he's been like 10 years old. He's 14. I've been blessed. I'm blessed to be able to say this statement with no reserve. You don't got to worry about working a job, kiddo. Your parents can more than afford to take care of you. No shade to anyone whose kids are working a job for whatever reasons, but I can comfortably make that statement. I have to be worried about my son having to work a job to make things make sense because me and his father are blessed to be able to afford to cover all of that. Him being able to work a job and understand work ethic is a bonus. Right now, the focus is your studies and making sure you're an upstanding person at school and at home. You working a job, that's secondary because me and his dad are in positions to where we can employ our child. We can give him an opportunity that he don't got to work for nobody else. That's not a common thing, but we're blessed to be in that pocket. But in no way do we flex that to a point to where our son doesn't understand and appreciate just how blessed he is and just how like this is not the norm. Like hugs are not the norm for kids. Let's just like, Let's just put a pause and just think about that. There are kids that go through Affection life and that go sense. that spend time in homes, whether it's their bio families, foster families, adoptive families, fucking friends from of the family that don't get that love and that they need those questions being asked that they need. You know, kids got stuff to get off their chest too. Kids are mean as shit. Yes. Okay. <laughs> in real life. They mean as hell. So if and, and and if you come from a household that is known for dragging folks from the nine nines to the two thousands, and that's just in you to do, like, for example, I talk shit. I rib, right? Easy. Whew. Those are the <laughs> factuals, right? His dad talks shit. We are some shit talkers. Ribbon, listen. Second nature. I talk shit in my sleep. That's how much I talk shit. Like, don't take me there. I don't get involved in rib sessions for a reason. Ask anybody about me. Off the cuff and in private settings, 
I gets down. So that's why I warn people, don't come for me if I didn't send for you. Cause I'll say some stuff that, oh, you mess around and you probably want to shoot me in my face type stuff. Like <laughs> I'm and that and I know that, right? It's some people who yeah. know that they got a lethal tongue and will, and will and will still say stuff and then wonder why other things happen after no. I know the type I just of person recently that I learned am. that I'm more aggressive than assertive. And although I'm I know that how I'm, you just now coming across that, though. although I know that I'm very assertive, I didn't think that I was really aggressive. But, you know, after it's been expressed to me on multiple occasions, and you by different that people, yeah. I'm like, OK, y'all might be right. You might be. You no, might you be know right. what? People like this is the thing. I really I truly like in my own pockets. When I shoot the shit with people, I'll talk shit about a random person off the cuff. And it's just, you know what I mean? Not nothing with malice. It's just if you see some stuff that's just random, yes. you're just gonna talk yes. shit. That's the extent of that. I truly am not finna rib you from a personal place if unless you come for me. That's and, honestly and, right. and truly. And I'm not I don't saying mean nothing no harm unsavory by... under the belt unless you truly come for me. Yeah, now, like you come I talk for me. Shit. Oh, the gloves is off, my darling. <laughs> the gloves is off. Now the only line that I don't cross, and I don't even I don't care how much beef we got, I don't care how ugly it get. One line I don't cross, I'm not talking about kids. I'm not talking about parents. Yeah. I'm gonna talk about you as a person all day long. I'm not going into any one of those two lanes because I feel like those are two lanes that regardless of how egregious that's that below statement the was that's below the belt and i know for me if you bring that energy to me about mine we fight in that's just it we gotta fight if you come in with that level of disrespect talking about my parent or my kid so and i know some people they live by the rule of all bets are off when we rib and i'm talking about everything and anything i'm gonna talk about your kid your mama dead or alive nah you're not finna do I can't that get with, with that energy. You're not finna do that with me. We finna have to square up in the parking lot in the goddamn. We finna fight. That's just that. That's just me. So, um, so yeah. So it's you know it's it's kind of frustrating in this space because right now everyone is trying to figure it out. Right, you got parents trying to navigate this shit. You got students trying to navigate this shit. You got educators trying to figure it out you got businesses Definitely everyone's shout trying out to the to educators who are also sense. virtual and trying to educate Salute our to educators. educators can we pause i mean let me pause before i go you know we, we've been talking about all of this but to the educators out there in my network that i don't know that i do know to the educators, educators you are appreciated have it just right? as hard as the students just as hard they as do. the parents and they gotta come up with game plans and lesson plans and right. follow-up like, plans we, and and rescue nobody plans nobody's ever prepared and, for you know what i mean they gotta shit, come up so. with a lot they got to come up with a lot, you know what I mean? And depending on where they're at, if they're not in a private school situation where the money is pretty much comfortably there for them to kind of do what they need to do, and but they still love your kid and they still want to try to create an environment to where they can be successful in spite of this pandemic, that is a lot when they're being pulled in a million and one different places trying to make this make sense. So to my educators, to 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 the parents that is doubling as educators at this point, yes, trying to make this make yes. sense, you are appreciated. If I could hug you, hug you all without the fear of COVID, I swear I would. I promise you I would. Like I I am blessed that my son is self-sufficient, that he is hyper intelligent, that it takes very little for me to talk to him and he is all that he needs to do compared to parents who have to sit down with their kids and like for real sit with them through it all through every assignment through every project and everything on top of especially if they got multiple kids and they got to keep that same energy you are appreciated because there's no amount of patience there's no amount of money that can be given for what you put in and that is a selfless situation i can't even i can't even i don't got it listen i'm blessed i'm thankful if my son was smaller i could not tell you with confidence that would have the same strength in my parenting that's just keeping it a buck it's not a whole lot of parents that's gonna say that honestly but i will tell you if my son was not in the space that he was in i do not know if i would be as chipper as i am about that portion of parenting because i got my own struggles and the people in my village know i don't i called them when the shit got rough for me and i'm like i'm about to put this kid on the curb so i can't even fathom <laughs> if it was beyond the little little ruffles in the fold that i got and the ruffle in the fold that I got is just my son adjusting to his freshman year of high school and a, and a hybrid Virtual situation learning. and going from a monastery learning setup to a college prep setting. That is the extent of my 
gripe. I have no issues outside of that. So when other parents and I hear their struggles and their complaints, and it is truly based in the fact that this is tough to navigate, I consider myself blessed. So anyone that is going through and parenting through COVID who truly don't got like a whole lot of stress that they dealing with, just take that blessing, man. And if you can provide support or help to a parent who is struggling, because I promise you, that is one thing that I have not done. And I'm truly going to try to tap in to the parents that are in my network that need a little extra support or whatever, whatever I can do. Like I'm in that space because like I'm blessed. And there's a lot of parents that through this pandemic are blessed and they're not dealing with the stresses that a lot of parents are dealing with when it comes to educating their kids and keeping them on track and working their job and keeping balance and trying to make all of this make sense. For those closest to me, I had my health scare and my stresses and that is a real thing too. But when I'm talking about big picture and you talking about parents who going through and trying to figure it out and make this make sense from the beginning now, I do not have those stresses. I am absolutely blessed and I don't have complaints. My stresses are stresses, yeah, but they light. They super light compared to other parents and other people dealing with and adjusting to what life is and still adjusting. Because for those parents who got special needs kids, who got kids with ADHD, who's got kids that's going through those struggles this shit is going to be ongoing until we are no longer having pandemic as a part of our regular vocabulary that is a, a fact and for parents who do not have those stresses man if you got the time and, 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 and anything or resources to help another parent do so please do so i don't know what i can do to help parents that are in that pocket i'm definitely gonna dial in and try to figure out what i can do in my own little way these schools is not beating down the doors to be resources for these parents that are in that pocket. Trust and believe they not. They're I won't not say that they don't the care, but they're not, not showing that. They, that... Not say, no, and, and, and that statement is not to say that they don't care. I'm not, I don't want anybody to think that because they could have all of the intents in the world, but intents right. don't help a parent in real time right. with their student who got ADHD. Who is, is struggling in their own and at way. the end of the day, it's not easy for That's anybody, parent, student, yes. teacher, administrator. Yes. It's not easy. It's not. So everybody has had to come up with a game plan mm-hmm. on the fly as to how to navigate this COVID situation. I done set up here, took everything, double bag, call Christmas gifts, said no Christmas. I done, like, I done went all, uh, on all extremes trying to navigate this, man. Hey, cousin, you are right. The struggle is real. It is so real. So my cousin just tapped in. She said the struggle is real. Virtual learning. My oldest trying to adapt to high school and working. It's real. On top of that, having a six-year-old in virtual learning. And if you got multiple kids doing virtual learning. Shout out to you. I got one. Like physical school? That's how you know it's crazy. When you got the choice to not send your kids to school, you say, you know what? I'm going to send you to school in spite of. Because it just makes more sense. And that's where my son is. He's an out, he's naturally an outgoing kid. So he wants to be engaged. And if he's in a situation, like you can't expect for a kid who's used to being able to have dialect and wants to actually engage to then turn that switch off and they sit in the, and they on the couch and they waiting for their time to actually dial in the conversation. Right. That's hard. That's hard. Especially even, it's even hard for me yes, working from right. home, yeah. being that I am able to engage, was able to engage with my coworkers, whether we're talking, you know, about a difficult customer that I just had, yeah. or whether we're just engaging about, you know, the weekend that we just had. Yep, I had a good weekend. I went to the Bucks game. We did this, that, and the other. Or, hey, I've got a question about, you know, okay, this difficult. We can't even get into that. Right. We got to talk the same place again. The conversation has changed. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. How? You know what I mean? Like, how do you exist in a city where you can either get taken out by a car accident or a Or COVID, because that's still a real thing. It's a real thing. We acting like it's not. Between us and, and Georgia, specifically Atlanta, I swear to God, I don't know. 
everybody talking about Florida is crazy ass people and woo woo, they do some woo woo stuff. At this point, yo, I seen I seen a video in real time of Atlanta last night. Last night. This pandemic. COVID is still among us. It's people getting vaccinations and having allergic reactions. They should be trying to figure out that part. Folks, out here. Out here. Can no mask, it? wall to wall. No way. There's no way. There's no way. COVID don't exist apparently <laughs> in pockets that's like heavily, but that goes like that was just like when COVID first dropped, right? What was the narrative? Black, folks Black can't people get can't COVID. get it. Exactly. The catalyst for our entire world literally being shut down was a black man getting COVID in the NBA. Right. Can we I, hey don't 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 do that? He got a church. No, don't do that. <laughs> hey, do not do that. That's part frustrating me because a few people was like, well, he don't really count because he's French. What they he's say, still a black man. One drop rule. One drop. One drop. Okay, we going off of that rule. One drop. One drop. That drop. man black. That man black. At the end of the day, he's standing out here. Black folks can't get it. And then a whole black person, however you want to identify, that man was black and he still got it. And shut down a whole NBA as a result of his callous and thinking. So, like, so did I. I. Like, so did I. Right. But seeing pictures and live that. videos I'm and. For me. I'm just speaking for me. So, and I got support for all those that was involved in it. I got love for y'all and everything. But for me, that was just bad time. So all the Milwaukee people wore masks to everything. Hey, but I know several the people Atlanta went. People, the Atlanta people told us, take that fucking mask off. And, and as a result, you had motherfuckers who came back up here and caught cold. So, like, like let's just keep that above. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and that's the part. I I went from everybody didn't know me personally. No, 2019. I was traveling so much. They Dora the me. Explorer. Dora. Okay. Backpack. I'm out here. Gone. Two trips a month at a bare minimum. I'm not exaggerating. Anybody that know me, if you don't believe me, ask them. I was on a flight so much they thought I worked for the airlines. No lie. Who? You got a plug? Why is you on the flight so much? No, I just I, I my job is very stressful and demanding. I need to be able to disconnect at, at my in order to keep me on post. I know what I need in my self-care to, to continue to love my career. And I found that balance, right? To go from 2019, traveling two to three trips a month, every month, the entire 2019, to no trips. I did not leave Wisconsin other than going to Schaumburg two weeks ago for a work training for, ironically, my trainer to catch COVID on, upon my arrival. Yes, I was in my hotel room to get a message that she believes she had COVID. Please don't come to the building for training. So the only time you get out of Wisconsin. So then I leave Wisconsin for the one time. Right. And didn't leave Wisconsin for the fear of the very thing that greeted me when I made it to Schomburg. And I now have to gather myself because 2021, I have like trips that really require my attendance. And I got to come up with the strength. The strength to, to travel and not have a full blown panic attack upon arriving at the airport. I'm a I'm a hey, I'm gonna tell you right now, those who Something. know me, when they be like, so we going out, and they gotta ask me, so Robin, how you finna be dressed? Because I'm the extra one of the group. <laughs> if you see me at the airport in a hazmat suit, mind your goddamn business. I That's would all not I'm be finna surprised. say. Oh God, I would not be surprised. I was dressed. You seen it. I was dressed. I was dressed. I posted the picture and got dressed on purpose because I knew y'all wasn't going to believe me. Otherwise, if I didn't dress and post evidence that I was actually going to come outside, nobody would have believed me when I text saying I was on my way because my anxiety, I'm not going to lie to y'all since COVID, my anxiety has consumed me. My social butterfly is on life support. Y'all know how often I would be out networking and, and, and shooting the shit because I support my people. I support and rock harder with MKE, uh, harder than the city that I was born and raised in. That's how much I've messed with this city. This is how, this is home. No lie. Like when I travel, 
always home but never repping. I don't rep PA, where I'm born and raised, where my family, where my father is from. I rep MKE, Wisconsin, Green Bay, Bucks, all of that, Brewers, all of that. That's what I rep. So it's like, I'm serious about this. But at the same time, I ain't trying to get sick for y'all either. I love y'all, right. but not that much. Right. Like, I got, I got health conditions myself. I got a mom with diabetes that I can't even really see like that because of COVID. Like, that's real shit. She got a whole grandson who is like, when do when can I comfortably see grandma? Because he goes to school 50 percent of the time and he goes to a school where those parents may or may not be traveling because they can afford to do X, Y, Z. You know what I mean? Like, that's just the reality. But I can't risk letting my son go see grandma because she's a diabetic and this is a pandemic. Whether you want to believe the numbers or not, I personally know people who have got hit with COVID and are not asymptomatic and they damn near didn't make it. I'm not trying to figure that out. I don't want to take the gamble and find out which side of the coin I'm on because if I am not asymptomatic and I got to go through this by myself and I'm in ICU and I can't be around my kid and I don't got nobody to hold me down, for me... That could be some life altering stuff that I don't want to go down. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. So if that means that you're not finna see me at a kickback or at a function, you're not finna see me nowhere. That's why I made my post the other day. Please don't invite me to nothing. At this point, after the mess, after after losing Rob, high key, don't invite me to nothing. I'm paying for promo. Everything on all is a gamble. Social social media platforms. I. I would rather pay for promo and for my my bit my brand name being out there than to risk it. It's just it's too much of a risk, right? Like it's too much, and I'm not I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole. But y'all know what it is. Y'all know what it is in pockets of this city, and we patronize places that we you know what I mean because for the love of our people, and we keep on yeah. In spite of, I mean, it's no different than like we vote against our own self interest, and then we wonder why we look in in the situations that we in. Like we just, you got to keep it a buck and be honest about the what we create for ourselves, right? Like we can't sit here and say we want better for ourselves, but we're not holding these businesses. None of these places. We're not like, holding they each other accountable. On a regular basis for alcohol, for the entry fee, for parking, yes. all of that. But then when stuff pop off. Security is nowhere to be found. Don't nobody know nothing. Talk about who that means. That's it's silence. Means. You know what I mean? And and, 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 and no, and I'm saying that, and I'm, come on in, chime in. Chime, come no, on. Tap in. Now, I, listen, I, listen, tap in. I'm totally fine. Tap in. I'm totally fine with that. And, and this statement, like I said, again, these views and opinions are mine. Mine. Robin. Me. Robin's Nest. Not tie anybody else that y'all see on my pod to my statements. Please don't do that. What I feel is my statements. And what I feel is that if an establishment is getting the support of the community and getting money hand over fist there should be a little bit more of effort put forth to keep your patrons safe and i know you cannot protect everything and everybody from the goofy people that's gonna do stupid shit regardless but there are certain establishments that are egregious in a lot and, and shit that's been going on and just doing what they feel they can do within reason and that's just for the amount of money that's being spent i just feel like that's just not enough and that's just my personal opinion i mean i agree with that um most of the time so the situation with rob um as unfortunate as it as it was super unfortunate really nothing wait, Mr. Before we, wait do before about. before we go forward thank you babes for your presence on the show I love you yes always continue darling I'm sorry y'all we just we making some changes and I wanted to make sure mm-hmm. she knew I appreciate her presence on the pod um continue I, I, there was really nothing Mr. J's could do about that. No, and and, that's, and, and and I will say this. I am not making this statement saying that Mr. J's could do anything to pre- prevent a simp-ass dude from doing what he did, yeah. right? But here's the thing. As someone who personally 
has went to Mr. J's in spite of because of the people that I rock with heavy being there and my car personally being ransacked and people that I know cars being broken into and windows being busted in the parking lot in front of the building around the corner from the building like and then we keep yeah, going the and, we keep going, <laughs> and we keep going and we keep going and we keep going and I just feel like there should be more done to ensure that security is like top notch up top versus other than they, they flashing pop. lights and 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 reflector jackets and bicycles and and yeah. you know what I mean like I I'm just saying and and here's the thing shoot the messenger if you want to but the narrative and what I've been hearing as a reoccurring narrative about this is that there are certain powers that be that are fully aware of this and have no interest in changing and again me making this statement is not to to validate any things that I've been told but the optics don't look good they, when you got brown and black folks supporting businesses and establishments the way that they do and security being as lax and outrageous as it is and they still supporting you and then someone like rob gets taken from us in front of that same establishment you have like everyone is trying to make sense of that it don't make sense. And the thing that keeps being brought up is, and the question that is asked, how do people keep going to an establishment that has been known for constant break-ins? I have folks telling me don't pull up because now they getting to the point to where they sticking you up before you get out of your car. Why are they sticking folks up? Why are they breaking into cars? The narrative that I've been told is they looking for pistols, licensed gun carriers with guns in their car. Yeah. They can't bring their guns into the establishment. It's just, it's just, it's so many layers and so much going on. And there is no, like these establishments, no, they, they don't got the perfect answer. They can't secure everything. That is not what I am saying. But if you are an establishment that has a following and a support so strong that in spite of your own safety, you will still go, you owe it to your patrons to figure out a way to exhaust every resource to keep them safe. To keep, you know what I mean? Like, that's just me. Again, this is my personal views. That's me. You, you, I'm sure that this is an unpopular opinion. And I got folks that work closely at this particular establishment that I grew up with. That, And this is no shade to them. This is no knock to them. And part of the reason why I'm not naming it, because y'all know what it is. Y'all know who I, what I'm talking about firstly. But secondarily, I don't want in any way for people to feel like I'm coming for that establishment. I'm not. This is me speaking my opinion based on what I've seen historically. I stay up the street from this particular establishment. And, and, and every time that I've been, it has been because the people that I rock with heavy is in that establishment. And that's the only reason why I'm going. I don't denigrate or knock nobody for going, but I always say, Go at your own risk because everyone I know ends up leaving there with a story. And if you got damn near historically people leaving with the same type of stories and you, and, but, but at the same time, you still charging folks for parking in your parking lot. If you charging that, you still charging folks for coming through your door. You got to give me something. Okay. So that's, that's a, a lot to unpack. No, I right? know. It's a lot. I know. <laughs> from, from a, um, from a business standpoint and somebody who's run a club. Um, and I've never run a club. So yes, I'm coming from strictly patron standpoint. Who is the alderman in that, in that district? Oh, don't give me the line and don't judge me that I do not know off the cuff. What district is that? Is that Khalif, is that Khalif Rainey's district? That might be his district. That might be, that okay. might be, I'm not, I don't quote me, but it might be. So, uh, okay. So you don't have those type of problems with parking and, people breaking into people's cars downtown mm. Mm. you know why mm. because the alderman in that district assigns police mm. a police presence I heavy would, during would, club I'm, time I'm speak on that go ahead continue heavy your during club time continue your thought. there's no police presence on fond du lac and around that. that area <laughs> we gonna get on that because i i was just having that dialogue right continue. that there's none Continue. Uh, oh, <laughs> right. you already, are, you right. already right. know. You already know where I'm so going. So that with district this. is right there. You already know where I'm going with this. But they don't. There, there's no police presence out there. So and you I, know, and you already know. Most of us ain't calling the police about a break in of our cars or whatever. We just gonna deal with the shit. Right. But there are some folks who are calling the police about the repeated up. break ins at this said establishment. And if this was anywhere else in the suburbs, we all know if. Let's do an example here. 
if Casablanca and Brookfield, hell, Casablanca on Brady, if they called and said there was some technical difficulties, then police would show up asapishly. Oh, yeah. Okay? Yeah. Asapishly. Yeah. For all the smoke. Instantly. Instantly. But there are known issues at this particular location on a prime street, heavily trafficked and residential. Not a police saying a mumbling word. So the other the other issue with that is that uh pause, they, pause, pause before we get into that. For anyone who has been following breaking news, they have reached an agreement for the coronavirus relief package. It's nine hundred billion dollar package. I do not have details beyond that. I will definitely be dialing into this when I get home. For those that know, I'm heavy into politics and this is important to me. So I will be definitely falling into this and dialing in and watching CNN so we can know what this means beyond if y'all finna get a $1,200 check or not. Okay. And uh, $900 billion, it doesn't sound like it. It definitely is not sounding like a whole lot. And for those, if you in politics, you if you know, you know. All right. So um, the the other part of that 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 equation is that it, that's a black owned establishment, right? So the, hey, wait, the white owned right there accountability. We need to hold those that we patronize and vote for accountable. Apple yeah. say that. Yeah. So um, the, the white owned establishments mm-hmm. and the uh, Arab owned establishments, because mm-hmm. most of those are Arabs, not uh, anything else. And the Italian, mm-hmm. the one Italian establishment, they never had that problem. You ever, you ever been on Milwaukee Street? You know, to I go have. to club. You already know. I have. I, uh, but but not I not specifically difference. you. But, no, but you, you know, know, I know the difference. I absolutely. The Milwaukee know the Street difference. is blocked off at Type club shit. time. You can't Bad you can't boy. drive a vehicle onto Milwaukee onto Milwaukee I'm Street. I'm just saying. But I'm saying, but folks can get knocked off, brains blowed out, goddamn cars turned upside down at certain establishments and not a mumbling word, not a single police presence, not nothing. Like the fact that I was told repeatedly that while Rob was laying there on the ground, this is a heavily trafficked area. There's no way that there shouldn't have been a police presence there faster than what they were. Well, okay, so. so like that bothers me. So for those it's, who weren't there, so so for those who weren't there, uh, I left at midnight. Um, right as the ugly sweater party ended. Yeah. When we went, we circled around because I park about four blocks away on a residential street in front of somebody's house. Mm-hmm. As most, <laughs> so as most of us do, so we I don't take get that bl- risk. Right. So I don't get. You, you know, try to find the most lit, pro- highly lit place yeah. with heavy traffic to a, to park to ensure that someone may or may not see some unsavory things. Absolutely. So we we pull off and the police came screaming up Fond du Lac. And they turn left to that street across the street from Mr. J's, mm-hmm. right? So then there's four cop cars there mm-hmm. for whatever this situation is happening right then. Mm-hmm. At that point, at any other club, mm-hmm. they're not leaving. They're not leaving that 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 I'm area. So whatever happened at, at midnight, they left. And then this happened at 145. I'm, I trust. I'm saying I made these statements because... My connects and the, and the people that inform me, they not inform me of stuff that's not valid. Yeah, we went to retox. so to know that there was a police presence yeah. in advance of. Yeah, and yet this man laid on the ground. People trying to keep him with us, and literally saying we couldn't even get motherfucking through. And the time it took from the time that any of them calls was made to them arriving when they had just been there is unexcusable and if it been downtown i mean i can speak from facts that i walked out of truth one night and someone was murdered in front of what is that restaurant carson's carson's and then police pulled up expeditiously yeah um we left and it was like it's just it's just no excuse retox is in brown deer you already know as soon as we pulled up as soon as we pulled up retox there's at least at least five squad cars at outside. a bare minimum but that's what i'm saying it's frustrating that we have pockets in our city that pick and choose when it's convenient to police some stuff and, yeah. to, and to secure some shit and that's the part that's frustrating this particular strip of street this particular establishment is known in the city 
for having problems and the fact that there has not been any type of consistent police presence if motherfuckers was getting their heads knocked off on the east side just on some residential stuff the police presence is is ramped up you got one of our own someone who held down the city who supported the community who was a good man to his kids who was a husband this man gets snuffed out and I, I'm just I'm just saying this so is coming from kind of a personal place but I'm just saying yeah, like it don't absolutely. take away from the fact that whether this was Rob or anybody else we shouldn't be okay with this being a constant narrative I, right I, okay so we shouldn't be let's we talk be. let's talk about the, this district uh, this police district in particular this shit right got my face switching. So, I'm so frustrated I'm sorry so the day the day the, the day of the election mm-hmm. after it was clear that Trump had lost Orange forty five being uh, orange. Yeah, they pulled <laughs> that. That district had before I got to Hampton had ten people pulled up. That just think about it. Uh, j- just think about it. Ten people pulled over mm-hmm. on Fonda. You already know. I'm just that's why I'm just looking down because I'm just. I'm, it's frustrating, man. It's frustrating. Uh, and I'm not. I'm not saying they racist, but it looks a little racist, right? That that's Fond du Lac, where that's where I'm at with things. Fond du Lac, with things. Fond du Lac in general has had gigantic problems. So you know, my my first cousin, my blood cousin, was killed in front of All Stars before they, that. That's why All Stars is closed, closed down. I remember that. I remember yeah. that story. So I already know someone. My cousin Earl Earl Hubanks. Family, but I definitely Earl, knew about that. Earl Hubanks. That's why that was my that was my man. That was my first cousin. I loved him to death. He got killed in front of All Stars, and. Mm-hmm. The police response, fighting. which is that damn near kitty corner. That's what I'm saying. So you already know I know. You already know I know. Mm-hmm. It's frustrating. It's mad frustrating. <laughs> Come it's, on, it's, it's mad frustrating, Come right? On, and this is one of these things where, like, this is not just, and I've seen, you know, follow up posts and stuff, you know, people that, that plant that. This is the thing. Here's my thing. I'll make this statement. You take it however you, you want to take it. Because, again, anybody that want to come and have a conversation with me about my opinions, Y'all know, good, bad, or indifferent, I'm all for having a conversation. I'm not one that gets flustered and get get pissed off about your opinion being different from mine. We can definitely have a healthy dialogue. So if you want to have that conversation, we can have it. But here's my thoughts and opinions on, on, on that. Like, when it's all said and done, we can sit here and we can have police presence for shit that ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Thanks. We all have witnessed that. They ain't got shit to do with nothing. But, some, but someone takes one of our R's right everybody was touched and had some type of impact with rob whether it was photography art shooting the shit kicking it or having a good fucking time right there's no reason for him to no longer be with us right now that shit just that that just shouldn't be right we sitting here talking about how can we save our city when we got the real some real ones who willing to dig in and put in the work, invest the money, the time, take a L for the sake of your neighborhood, for the sake of saving your, your community. He was one of them ones. We can't get no closer to any type of resolution if we keep snuffing out the ones that's going to make the difference and make it make sense for our kids. Like, that's where it's at. Like, I don't got all the answers. I'm not trying to be the champion for the community. I'm going to do my part in my own little way. But if we expecting for a for real change and we expecting for other men to respect what the f- is we trying to do, that can't happen if we don't have upstanding men that set an example at the forefront. And he was one of them ones. Period. That was evident when my entire Facebook and Instagram timelines, entire T. Everyone is hurting behind this. Every single post, every single post from the moment the news hit, everyone is hurting behind this. That ain't for no reason. That's not a, that ain't no cap. That ain't nobody making up something about a man that ain't real. Yeah. That is what that, that's the seeds that that man planted and he cultivated and then was supposed to grow. And now they not. Now we got a man's art studio a man's family and wife that's got to figure this out a week before the holidays and then still continue on when we all finna go on about our regular lives while they grieving. Let's not get it twisted. 
His wife and kids is finna suffer. They hurting right now. Yeah. And we going to go through and enjoy our families, enjoy our food. We going to kick it. We going to do what we do. We're robbing our hearts, but we still going to get to be with our people. And meanwhile, she's got to grieve. She got to plan a funeral. Her kids got to grieve. They got to process going into 2021 without a man and a, without a situation that they've been grown to know. It shouldn't be the norm for kids not knowing who their daddies is and, and regularly being around them. Now, I'm not saying that you, you it's got to be this same household or whatever. If you got a solid co-parenting situation, whatever that looks like, like kids should know and should be able to be comfortably in a space with their parents. And now these four kids don't have their daddy for what? And people continuing to kick it and support and, and go out and party. And somebody made a post like, how can people just go out and kick it after something like that? And personally, I don't understand how people can kick it in business as usual. And then you have posts, you know, folks mad at people for saying they finna pack up and leave. Why are you mad at these people? At the end of the day, if they feel like they want to make a post, they want to pack up and leave. They want to do whatever they do to create peace for them in spite as a reaction to this bullshit that's going on in our city. I'm not denigrating them in any way. If they're going to make a post, if they're going to pack up and move, if they're going to fall back and not go out no more, I respect whatever you decide because you have to do what is going to make sense for you. Me personally, you ain't going to catch me nowhere. I'm on a flight and that's it. Locally, you're not really going to see me nowhere. I'm getting my hair done. I'm getting my nails done. I'm supporting businesses that's going to make sense for my life, for my day to day. That's the extent of what you're going to see for me. And that's personal. You're not getting, I'm not out here going to nobody's establishments for nothing because none of us, clearly none of us are removed from something that could happen to us similar to Rob. Like, let's just keep that a buck. Yeah. None of us are removed from that. Most up, you can be the most stand up person, but if somebody wants you, they're going to get you if they feel like they want to get you. Yeah. That's just what it is. Like, Somebody made a post like, how can people be going out? And somebody responded, well, you just got to keep living and pray for your covering. And I see both sides of that. If you feel like, yo, I'm not going to be held hostage by other people doing other things. I respect you for that, too. Me personally, I just can't see going into nobody's establishments. It don't seem safe on no level for me. I'd rather be in the house ensuring that at, at a bare minimum, I know I'm here for my kid every single day because I sat my ass down and just stayed in the house versus hoping that I come home every day after going out to kick it. That's just where I'm at. Yeah. No shade to nobody who feel like they're going to continue to live their life and go out in spite of. That's just not where I'm at with life. If it ain't got nothing to do with my money and my son, you're not going to see me there. That's it. That's all. I'm popular enough in this city. Say what you want. You may believe it. You may not. But I got enough clout in this city to where I feel like I be all right. No, no, that I'm, I'm, no, I'm telling you, I'm real. speaking from me. That's this real. is me. This is me. Again, this ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. This ain't this ain't no opinions of nobody else. That is me. I'm not in a space where I'm going to be out here kicking it in these Milwaukee streets after something like that. Because if they can take someone they like ride from us. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody safe. That's how I feel. Because I just don't understand how somebody like Rob can get sn snuffed out like that. Like how? How? I got very little going on in the grand scheme of things. So, you know what I mean? Like, if, if he, someone who we all collectively responded and felt like was enough of a positive energy in the city to not deserve that, you know what I mean? Like if a, if somebody could feel like that, if someone is so much in, in a mode that they don't give a fuck about the ripples in a pond for that man, I'm foolish to think that I hold any weight to anybody. And I'm not going to play that game because I know the moves that will happen after my demise. If it were something like that, I'm good. I'm good. And it's unfortunate because, I, you know, people were saying, and that too, like we don't, we shouldn't have to alter our, the way that we live because of stupid people. But we also want to get home to our kids, our significant others. We want to get continue to do what we do on a daily basis. So you got to be smart. It's chess, not checkers. Motherfuckers who ain't got nothing to lose, who have nothing to gain, who don't care about you. Yes, they're going to make them moves and take them risks because they don't care. 
they already don't got nothing and don't see no light at the end of the tunnel so this is just a means to an end and as as cold and callous as that is that is the harsh reality that we are in and it's getting more real as this pandemic grows longer and as we have the have our our government having a pissing match over stimulus packages so for me that's why I said the announcement that they came across came to an uh, understanding about this stimulus package is a major deal because folks is out here hurting folks is out here scamming doing whatever they need to do during this time and you're gonna be on one end or the other end of that and it ain't no different from folks that's taking people out that's robbing folks that's breaking in the cars that's sticking up folks if it's gonna be you or them it's gonna be you because for them this is all that they got that don't make it right but that's where we're at so knowing that that's where we're at i'm not putting myself in a position where someone can get me that's where i'm at it, it's weird i'm i'm reading some of your comments and I was just my say, cousin, I- my my cousin who Shaw on here, he said, "Ain't nobody been safe since these fools been out here killing kids." See the 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 numbers don't change. Mm. The the faces and the reasons why change, mm-hmm. right? And fair. so, fair. Um, it's not like the num that like the murder rate is down from the nineties when crack was running the streets. Murders mm-hmm. rate the r- murder rate's about the same. Mm-hmm. Right, it's just different reasons why people get killed. There was a th- there was a code that was followed in the nineties, and it's not followed anymore. There's a let the people know what that code is in case you're not familiar. <laughs> okay, so you, there was no random acts of violence in mm-hmm. the nineties. Mm-hmm. You don't shoot to shoot. You shoot to. If somebody got killed in the nineties, it was for real. It was, it was. It, it was like for real. It drama. was for a reason. I know that. Like the the neighborhood I grew up in, we already knew. If somebody got snuffed out on our block, it was real beef. Because yeah. otherwise, they they just boxing it out of riff and have a conversation. Yeah. That's just what it was. But it ain't that way. Now. Then, You're right. then okay. So then when you we've always had stick up kids, right? We, we always had, had robbers. You can't get away with, from with, that. Right. Ne- you'll never get away from that. Yeah, but yeah. the difference is that they knew. Okay, if I don't brandish a gun Mm -hmm. or shoot somebody if i get caught i get less time these dudes don't care about that because time time what i'm gonna sit right because that's clout i'm sitting no cap i'm not telling nothing and i'm gonna take this l yeah even if it plants a seed to set you up for failure once you get out yeah women and kids when women and kids were off limits right now they're not they are definitely not. I mean, at, you know, on on it's our wildly different time on, on our show, we uh, uh, harshly condemn uh, the boy from Canada, and we don't, I don't even really say his name no more. Who shot Megan? Oh, the Oompa Loompa. Okay, yeah. gotcha. We, we, Duly noted. Yeah, Duly we, noted. We, I'm just talking about. Yeah, we, we harshly, I don't entertain that man. Either. We harshly gotcha. condemn condemn him because yeah. you just don't shoot a woman, no matter what I she did you talking about man i don't care what you talking about in what way is that like appropriate like unless she showed up with a pistol finna shoot you in what way is shooting her appropriate and she didn't have a gun right oh she big as fuck okay again she in a car sitting down she not you know what i mean like what yeah. none of that makes sense to me but then i mean just in general though when you think when you take the celebrity out of it and you think about how people justify the actions of 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 individuals i won't even say of just men because there are women that are capable of knocking a dude between the stove and the refrigerator and thinking that stuff is okay yeah in no way on either forms do i feel abuse in any like physical that's just not it's not what's up you shouldn't be keep your hands to yourself okay right. Keep your hands to yourself. That's rule number one. Keep your hands to yourself. If the person is saying something that's got you so compelled in your spirit that you want to put hands on them, that you like, again, easier said than done. But you need to put your big girl pants on, big boy pants on and move around. Because I know I can only speak for Milwaukee and and personal experience from family members like directly related these courts ain't playing around if you sitting up here trying to do some leisurely domestic violence they're not playing with you guys no that's a woman's state they're not playing so why would you even want to risk that 
Like, why? It's not even worth the headache, the time, the energy. You can't get that back. Let that heifer go. Let that Negro go. If it's going to cost you time, money, and peace, why? Yeah. Again, saying this because I know that it's easier said than done. Matters of the heart are complicated. But I would much rather be brokenhearted and soggy in the face and alone than behind bars or hoping that somebody can come up with my bail money because I allow somebody to take me off my square. I'm good on all of that. And I've been pushed. Those that know me personally know. There was one situation in particular. I fed, damn near fell short of the Lord's glory. So I'm not saying that like I ain't guilty of having weak moments too. But my desire to be free and be present for my son and not having nobody control the narrative to my son on why I am not in his life, that weighed more than getting any type of revenge or showing this nigga that I ain't the motherfucker to play with. Yeah. That's the long and the short of it. So I held that L and bowed out gracefully and accepted it for what it is because being in prison just to prove a point to show him and anybody that supersedes him that I ain't the one. No, that ain't what it is. I'm do. good on that. That, that ain't what it is. I'm do. good on that. I'm I'm good on that. So I, I don't know. You know, it's it's I wasn't, and he don't know this yet, but I'm finna say this. I wasn't even gonna record today. Like honestly speaking, I wasn't even in the space. I was supposed to do a whole photo shoot today. Shout out to Tamara. Uh we we gotta figure something out, an alternative. But like I wasn't even headspace to do really much of anything. Like I was so I was so thrown off by the news I got from Rob. I hadn't slept since I got the news Friday night. I didn't go to sleep until late yesterday. Mm. I woke up today thinking it was Monday type shit. That's where I was at. So, like, for me, and I still got to try to process, like a lot of people, do you go to the do you go to the funeral? Do you go to, you know, the wake to pay your respects? Or do you keep in your mind the last memory that you have of him in the living, in the flesh? You know what I mean? Like, that's a lot. And I hate that a person who is walking freely and living amongst us can like enjoy his life while everyone specifically his wife and kids don't have a choice but to accept their new reality yeah. that shit make me want to like that's part of the reason why like I'm, I'm in the space that I'm in because I want to punch somebody in the face honestly and truly for for his kids if nothing else he got four kids I know. you know what I mean a week before Christmas yeah so, you know, I say all that to say, if you're planning on still going out, you know what I mean, in Milwaukee, if you're planning on still being social, so be it. I send you endless prayers, blessing, and covering. I, I pray that you do what you have to do to stay safe. If you are going out, please, buddy system, don't leave by yourself. Leave in groups. Leave in a pack, goddammit. Wolf pack this shit. If you are going to any establishment, I, I don't care, black owned, brown owned, white owned, beige owned, blue owned, don't matter who own it. Downtown, midtown, goddamn, it don't matter. Just protect yourself, be safe, be aware. I don't know what else to say, honestly. Honestly, I don't know what else to say because it's, it's really sad as times. It's really messed up to know that we in a time where someone can do something so heinous to somebody that was so loved. But these are the harsh realities that we are in. These are the harsh truths that we have to process. Um, and if you continue to move and function as if these things are kind of like blips on a radar or, you know, whatever your thought process is. Because, again, I don't want anybody to feel like they're denigrated for processing and dealing with things how they deal with things. I choose to deal with things a little bit more different and compartmentalized than others. But if you're still going to be out here hanging out, kicking and doing what you do, just be safe, be aware don't continue to move the same way you moved before this. If Rob was somebody you loved and appreciated, respected in any way, definitely do things differently. He was a lover of life and everything that was about his wife and kids. Just follow that same line of, of thinking and, and the way that you move. 
And before I get super emotional and get to crying in front of y'all, I'm about to dead this and shut things down because I need to process. Um, I appreciate you, Don, for coming on. That's why I popped up on you. Yeah, I appreciate you. I appreciate everybody. Let me just say this. Anyone who has called me, texted me, inboxed me, checked on me um, during this time, again, I am not someone who is at all affected in in, in in this no way near compared to his wife and his children so please anyone who is watching this who is listening to this do not take this as me trying to gaslight or ride the wave of Rob's passing he was someone who was special to me just like he was to so many I I grow, grew to know him and love him like so many through dope ass kickbacks art and alcohol and I am appreciating and enjoying those memories just like everyone else and super broke up at him being gone before his time. You're not supposed to question the higher power, but I got questions. I do honestly and truly, because I do not feel like this was his time. You can't, t- I, I just don't, it doesn't sit well with me in accepting that this was all that he was supposed to do. That's just me again. Um, so if you love him, support him, love his family. Um, and if you are an admirer of the way that he lived his life, just live your life in that same vein in honor of him. Love who you love, tie up any busted loose ends, say what you need to say and live your life, right? Own your truth love your family don't harbor anything like just say what you need to say because truly tomorrow is not promised right between covid and just the unsavory thing that's going on in this world just love on those that love on you and even if they don't love you send them love anyway right just send them love anyway everybody in different head spaces about different things in life um but truly truly if you loved rob and if this touched you and it, and it hurt you in any way remotely the way that it hurt it it hurt me or any of the people that were close to him figure out what you need to do to get in a space that makes sense for you and that was similar to the life that he led that's all i that's all i can that's all i can really ask for Mm -hmm. and with that i will say stay safe wear your masks Uh, um love those that love you Love those that don't love you, right? In spite of, still send them love. Um, Be safe. Hug your babies. Say what you need to say before it's too late. And um, to all those that I love and that I know, just be safe, man. I'm about to start crying and shit because I just, this has been a really tough year, right? We rounding this out and, um, and we've all lost people that like here today, gone tomorrow. You would never thought that it would be the last time that you would see them, that you would talk to them, that you would throw a shot back, right? And it makes it really weird because right now it's just unsafe times. You don't know what, you know, where to go, how to function, right? And um, and you want to do what's in that best interest for you, but at the same time you want to love on your people. So it's a really tough time. So before I sign off, and I'm all soggy and emotional. I just want to say to all my friends and family, thank you, babes. To all my friends and family, I love you. I appreciate you. Even if I have been lax in my delivery and my presence, just know that I love you and that I pray for you and that I appreciate you. And anyone who has loved on me and sent me kind words and well wishes and loved on my son, um, you are loved and you are appreciated, right? Um, And... Just continue to be that space for everyone in your life. Um, I'm definitely going to try to do what I can to improve on being a better person, being more present in in the people that I care for and love um, and not let it be something like this that compels me to be more active. So I challenge everybody to do the same. We got about a week left in this year. Make it count. Please make it count. Please. If you got unfinished business, tie that shit up. Good, bad, or indifferent. Tie that shit up. You don't want to go into tomorrow. And what if you don't got tomorrow? Tie it up. 
So that being said, I'm going to hop on up out of this nest because I got to regroup and gather myself. I love all those that have listened, that have chimed in, that plan to listen, that have supported me, that have sent me well wishes for anything that I am doing in my life. I truly love and appreciate you all for everyone that has supported me and my son in these difficult times. Your love and support is appreciated. Um, I will be back to give y'all more content and awesomeness that is Robin's Nest after New Year. Um, Let's pray that when we go into 2021, it is better for everyone and that we don't start the year with craziness um but even if we do i send love prayers and covering to everyone and uh yeah it's been real y'all so the bird is out the nest for the rest of 2020 see y'all on the other side wrapping up